Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and members of Missouri Senate Lutheran Churches from North Dakota and Minnesota. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God, and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion, in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for the sixth Sunday in Epiphany is from Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through 8. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The epistle reading is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 through 20. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished, If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. And he came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came out from him and healed them all. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, and revile you, and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For so their fathers did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, when someone sneezes, it's customary to say, God bless you. Likewise, when something good happens to a person, such as getting married, having children, or winning a billion-dollar lottery, we will often hear that person declare, I am truly blessed. When I look at my life, I say, I am truly blessed. Wife, children, employment, leisure. And these things are blessings from God. For Scripture tells us that every good and perfect thing is from Him. So who are the truly blessed? In biblical times, it was often assumed that the wealthy were more blessed by God than the poor, even going so far as to assume that a person's misfortunes were always the result of some sin they had committed. In other words, rich and happy people are blessed by God, while the poor and downtrodden are cursed, or at best, not blessed, or blessed less. We, we even find Jesus' disciples questioning him at one point regarding a blind man. They thought that his blindness was somehow connected with a particular sin that he or his parents had committed. Jesus, however, assures them that this is not the case. So maybe having a difficult life, like the blind man in John 9, is not proof that one is cursed. But is it accurate to say that wealth and health and happiness are the greatest blessings? Maybe. But wait, not so fast. I mean, isn't it true that often what we consider at first glance to be a blessing turns out to be a curse? They say, be careful what you wish for. This reminds me of those stories of people who find a magic lamp and are granted three wishes, but the wishes turn out not to be more, they turn out to be more of a curse than a blessing. In recent times, there's this so-called lottery curse in which multi-million dollar winners within years of winning testify that winning the lottery ruined their life. Many later say that they wish they had never won it. So if riches and wealth are not true blessedness, what is? In today's gospel reading, Jesus teaches us about true blessedness. As usual, he puts a surprising twist in his answer, which no doubt shocked his listeners and grabbed their attention. So what does the scripture say? And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. What? Blessed are the poor? I don't know about you, but... Most people in this world do not consider poverty to be a blessing. And yet there it is in red and white. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. But Jesus is not finished. He continues. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. These statements are subversive. They overthrow everything we have ever learned in this world about blessedness. On the surface, these things do not look much like blessings. Poverty, hunger, weeping. These sound more like curses. Not only that, but this poorness goes beyond just economic poverty. It can take on a range of meanings. Destitution of wealth, lowly, afflicted, helpless, poor, needy. In Matthew's account of the Beatitudes, he includes blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There is no contradiction here, for Luke's statement carries the same meaning. The poor, the downtrodden, the captives, these are the ones Jesus came for. As Isaiah wrote, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. There are a few ways one might react to these blessings. One reaction is to reject Jesus' words outright. Everything we are taught in our culture screams out against this idea. No, the culture says, blessedness is growing up, getting a career, a house, a car, the American dream. Jesus is not describing the American dream. Some may find themselves thinking, 
Well, if poverty and misery and lowliness equal blessing, then maybe I'd rather not be blessed. No parent, upon holding their newborn baby for the first time, says, I hope one day you'll grow up in abject poverty, homeless and miserable. Another reaction would be to go the other way and think that Jesus is giving us directions concerning how to be blessed, as if Jesus is providing some kind of step-by-step program to live a blessed life. The answer in that case would be to take a vow of poverty and self-abasement, selling all possessions and fasting continually to remain in a state of hunger and wail and lament daily. Actually, the answer then would be to join a monastery or a convent. Neither of these responses are appropriate, and both reveal a misunderstanding of the text. So how should we understand this unique kind of blessedness? To figure this out, let's go back to verse 20. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, notice that Jesus is talking to those who are already his disciples. They are already blessed. Then he says, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. When it says, for yours is the kingdom of heaven, in Greek, the word for is hati. Hati can be translated as for or because. Now, I know this is a bit technical, but it does shed some light on what Jesus is actually saying. Blessed are you who are poor because yours is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, belonging to the kingdom of heaven comes first. It is for this reason that the poor are blessed. It's kind of like saying, you are a millionaire because you won the lottery. It would be nonsense to say that I must make myself a millionaire so that I can win the lottery. That's backwards. It is also backwards to think that I must make myself poor in order to inherit the kingdom. This blessing is not a condition for blessedness. It is a description of those who already have the kingdom of heaven. Those who have received the kingdom are poor, hungry, and they mourn. Jesus also says, blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil. How is this a blessing? Being hated, excluded, reviled? Who wants that? But then Jesus reveals the reason why these things are a blessing. And this is a key to unlocking the earlier verses. This hatred and exclusion and reviling is on account of the Son of Man. It happens because we belong to him. That is the true blessing. So he says, rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For so their fathers did to the prophets. The blessedness is because of a pre-existing condition. You belong to him already. The kingdom is already yours. Returning to Jesus' sermon, he closes with four woes. These woes describe the condition of those who do not inherit the kingdom of God, but instead find their meaning, joy, and consolation in this earthly kingdom. He says, But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Some trust in their wealth. Their money is their God. But Jesus says that you cannot serve two masters, money and God. The children of the kingdom, however... Though we may have earthly wealth, we know that we are really penniless. Earthly wealth is temporary, and the only riches that we really have are those that are found in Christ, where rust cannot destroy and thieves cannot break in and steal. The fact is, we are all beggars. We are the poor in spirit, for through God's law, we have been shown our sinfulness and depravity. We come before the throne of God's majesty, bringing nothing of our own that has any value. Jesus also says, Woe to you who are full now, for you shall be hungry. And though we may have food on our tables, this woe is not for us, for we know that that food can never satisfy the cravings of our souls. The fact is that we do hunger. We hunger for that righteousness that only Christ can give us. We hunger for the partaking of his body and blood, the only food that can satisfy our spiritual hunger for righteousness. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, 
for so their fathers did to the false prophets. We may even smile and laugh, but we know that the joys of this world are fleeting, and the only real joy that can be found is that which is found in the wounds of our Savior on the cross. So we do mourn. We mourn over our sinfulness. We mourn over the suffering and pain in this fallen world, hoping and praying for the salvation of our God. And this salvation has come in our Lord Jesus. He came into this world poor, hungry, and mourning. Isaiah tells us that he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. He was the true blessed one, and through faith in his name, we also receive all of the blessings. He is the heir of the kingdom, and Paul tells us that we are co-heirs of the kingdom. Yes, we sin. We sin grievously. We feel the weight of that sin, and we come begging as destitute and impoverished souls, hungering for righteousness, mourning and grieving over our sinfulness. And we are the blessed ones, for he assures us that we are forgiven. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. He is the true blessed one, and in him we too are truly blessed. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you would like more information on the LCMS Church in your area, please visit the North Dakota or Minnesota North District websites at the addresses on your screen. Or log into www.lcms.org. If this program has been a blessing to you, please send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living, North at 821 Fifth Avenue, South, Fargo, North Dakota, zip code 58103. It's through your prayers and continued support that we can spread the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Main Street Living is a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the North Dakota and Minnesota North Districts of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and is supported by member churches and viewers like you. Thank you for your support. 
Main Street Living North is produced in cooperation with Grace Lutheran School. Since 1911, Grace Lutheran School has inspired students in grades pre-K through grade 8 to embrace a devotion to Christ and a love for learning. So many things here I felt like I got to do before I would have if I would have gone to a public school. We had, especially in music class, we used recorders. I remember learning those first or second grade and um, thir or third grade, and that was just really fun to really jump into that musical um, experience. There were a few years that I didn't really like to do it. I thought it was not very cool, but then I got into it, and I like it a lot now, and I hope to continue with that. I started the clarinet here in fourth grade. I remember the day that the music teacher brought the instruments in and we all tried them out and the clarinet just kind of, she's like, oh, that, that definitely fits with you. And so I played all through high school. We go out and uh, play for churches and we sometimes play for chapel and we've uh, been playing for graduation a couple of years. I, I still remember all the lyrics to the songs of the musicals. I could sing them. Um, there, there was just such a buzz, you know, that would go around in the school when, you know, all the students, all the classes were preparing for that. And I remember, you know, getting on our costumes for Ansylvania and being in the classroom with all your classmates and, you know, feeling that excitement to put on a show for everyone. And um, it was always around Jesus, too. They never forgot, you know, it's not just about the presents at Christmas. We were talking about Jesus every year. I was in Ambassadors uh, Choir and in Band. For, um, all of, for all the years that I could be. I got to join the high school band, I remember, a year before I should have. Um, just because I already had that experience already, I'd been playing for a few years already, and um, so I just was a little bit ahead. I never really had a hobby as a kid, and um, so I was always trying to find something, and through, through the music department here, I definitely found something that I loved. Visit us at gracelutheranschool.org.